Hello there YouTube, this is Sybil's Mids back at it again with Month of Tiny Rogues where we are showing off uh, Tiny Rogues content throughout the entire month. Um, I believe today we were going to go over our mastery since the last video we went over uh, Cinder 16 and showing that off and now would be a good time to show off like why I'm picking certain uh, masteries here. We're going to try and go through this quick because obviously we don't, we don't want to get stuck here all day today. We actually want to get a couple of runs in, and Cinder 16 is probably going to bop us a couple of times. So, first things first, uh, we do go for Rebirth, simply because getting revived once is, in my opinion, probably worth more than most other things here. Because it's worth two hearts, possibly more, depending on what you have, and it's always nice to have a circuit breaker for when stuff gets absolutely horrendous, like later in the game. Um, unfortunately we have to take 11th hour. I don't necessarily think that that's, like, good. In fact, I think that it's bad that it's, um, you're taking more shares out of other rooms that actually give you growth and instead putting them into stuff that, uh, heal you when you are about to die. We take safe bets simply because we're usually not cursed, but I would still rather get more rewards out of, like, uh, gold out of chests, um... Anything basically that, like a lot of events, will uh, proc safe bet. I don't know. I just find it very convenient. It's possible that I may not want this, but I usually, I'm actually pretty much over here for key to success, which is if you start a floor without a key, which happens to me quite often, I usually don't path towards keys, then you get one key for free, which is good because that means that I can choose to not go to one of those rooms and instead get something that I feel like I need more often. I could see both of these being cut and put someplace else. Normally, I will have um, secret rooms highlighted and at least one secret per floor. I believe it says secret service here. And I'm trying to play without that recently. And each floor being guaranteed to have at least one secret room is kind of huge. Obviously, this also ups the value of bombs, which I typically tend to start with as a trinket. Up over here, I have um, mi more mimics, similarly because more mimics means uh, whenever you fight mimics, you get the loot drops. It's double the amount of a normal like chest of its kind. And most specifically, you don't need a key to get that loot then, so it reduces the need for keys, which, again, I'm more bomb heavy, less keys. Works very well for me. I prefer ebb and flow. Technically speaking, having more rooms at the lower floors would actually be more beneficial, and having less rooms at the more deadly floors would also be more beneficial. I don't know why I take this one. I mean, I guess I kind of got to be here for... Secret Service and Trust Issues, but um, I could see cutting this out if you didn't necessarily want to be here. I take one base movement. It's possible, like, I don't think that 0 .05 seconds of base invincibility after dashing is very good. Like, I haven't timed exactly. Like, obviously, they tell you how much uh, invincibility you normally have. This is technically 20% more invincibility. At a baseline, I believe, you get uh, 0.25. Um, I don't believe that this is good because I tend not to dash when I should. And I would much prefer to just move faster personally. Most characters are around 7, maybe 7.5 seven and, and adding plus 1 base movement. It's around 12% movement speed, which is equivalent to boots and a lot like 20 dexterity i am a dexterity disrespecter so the fact that i can basically just get what i want out of dexterity without going into dexterity i prefer it i could also see kicking this out and then of course reduce your base stamina recovery by 0.25 seconds i could actually see this because there's quite often especially when you're in higher cinder levels and you start with an additional three seconds you're not really going to feel it then because having uh, five seconds for your cooldown and then reducing it to 4.75, I 
I don't know. That might actually be a significant difference. But um, the other thing to know is that since this reduces your base cooldown recovery time, it actually makes any sources of stamina recovery time even better. Which, normally speaking, that stat would have diminishing returns. This is technically, air quotes, a multiplier as far as increasing your stamina uptime. Um, as I mentioned in another video, I prefer to start with 5 XP and take uh, 6 XP to level instead of gaining just plus 1 XP. It allows me to level faster in floor 1, so that hopefully I have a perk, maybe even 2, depending on exactly how lucky I am with secret rooms, to fight the first boss and sort of like set the foundation of my build there. Um, my first trait selection always offers four traits, just gives me more to choose from. Of course, this is technically pathing as far as like Cinder 16 is concerned, because Cinder 16 is going to give you, what is it, uh, Born to Fail or something like that, Set Up to Fail, where you can't see all of your traits. So, in that regard, it basically just gives you another option for a color that maybe you want. I gained one free trait reroll on my last trait selection. Again, on Cinder 16, I don't think that gaining a free reroll when you don't know what you're grabbing is useful at all. I would much prefer to hopefully land the last trait that I want instead of in a normal run, making sure that I have a trait that I do want because me personally, I'm willing to roll with just about anything and sometimes I want to, you know, spice things up. So, gaining one free trait reroll would kind of be a waste to me. I take Well-Rounded Beast here on entering floor 2, 4, 6, and 8. I gain plus one of my lowest attribute. While I am a dexterity disrespecter, chances of me having low dexterity is very low, and even then I would still appreciate getting plus four dexterity throughout the entire run. It's hard to briefly describe exactly why I prefer this over 30% chance of all food rewards to contain your highest attribute. Like, I don't think that this gives you anything, and I don't think that all-in builds are good. Like, the highest I've ever gotten is like 62 strength, and I was like, okay, like this worked out, but it's not something that I would look for all the time plus four like let's say that it's strength that's 20 equip load that's pretty insane plus four uh intelligence is four percent crit chance it's okay and then four percent uh or plus four to dexterity it's all right but again like that's a little bit more movement speed on top of this movement speed here i uh, just highly prefer this i could see taking this off though if you didn't prefer this here I also have wildcard trait selections always contain trait of the lowest attribute that you have. Again, I enjoy a spicy build every once in a while. Sometimes I pick Barbarian. I choose an Intelligence one because I just want to feel something. You know? Otherwise, yeah, I could definitely see taking these out here. Maybe even this. And then you could put it over in this bossing stuff for more rewards. Coming back over here, plus one luck on floor one and two. Just make sure that you get more rewards, better rooms. Curves has less chance of downgrading room rewards. Same idea. And then of course, locked cellars never contain locked things. If you were a key respecter, then obviously you would take this off because you're probably taking keys. Or if you always play, what is it, thief? Then you have thief set and then you can always pick locks. Otherwise, highly respect this because again, I don't want to pad towards keys because I could be pathing towards better things. Uh, and then I go over here for defeating the boss without uh, getting hit grants me magic find for the reward selection. This actually used to be, this used to be something else. This used to be more souls. So since this isn't the case anymore, I'm actually probably gonna remove this. We'll keep it here for now. Otherwise, going through the whole floor without getting hit will offer plus one reward. I can maybe see that on Cinder 16, because at the first floor, you pretty much have to not get hit. But um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, again, just keep this how it is. 
one suppression against fours, uh, one, two, and three bosses. Again, that's basically an extra heart, just prevents us from dying all of a sudden. And it was mainly to get here. So now that I'm taking this out, I might also consider getting rid of this, putting it someplace else. I take easy mode or lazy stroll. Enemies in floor one have 30% less health and armor. Floor two, 20%, floor three, 10%. Again, just trying to make sure that I'm able to kill things earlier, which sort of give, like I could see why somebody wouldn't want this because it's basically reinforcing a bad build. But especially when you're putting all those multipliers up against yourself or all those modifiers. I kind of need to make sure that the fact that I don't have damage or might have negative 30% attack speed or damage. Uh, let's make it a little bit easier for me to actually kill things. Um, this is also one that I've been playing around with a lot. I, I've had it during content. But it is you encounter 50% more packs of enchanted enemies but they have 25% less health and armor. I don't know if this affects bosses. If anybody does, please leave a comment down below explaining that. Um, I obviously haven't recorded enough footage to tell if this is or is not a case. But if this reduces the boss health by 25%, then it is kind of huge because in Cinder 16 bosses are enchanted. Otherwise, encountering 50% more packs of enchanted enemies is obviously extremely deadly. Down here I take weapons and armors. Armories can never be enchanted with a negative enchantment. This is again basically just to counteract Cinder 16 because one of the mods is you start with a negative enchantment, things have a higher chance to have a negative enchantment. So I know that I can go into an armory, upgrade my weapon, I don't have to worry about any of them not being negative enchanted. Then of course floor 3 always contains an armory that offers two weapon choices. Definitely appreciate that. Pretty much same deal, just trying to get off of that crappy weapon as soon as possible. Pawn shops guaranteed to a floor appear on floor 3, 6, and 9 instead of appearing randomly. Appearing randomly is theoretically better, but with the constrained um, inventory going from 8 slots to 6 slots, which again is even worse if you have a companion or if you're trying to go into cast on crit right away. Um, I want to make sure that I can free up my inventory at a regular rate. And so that's why I like to guarantee pawn shops. Otherwise, I could see guaranteeing taverns because that's a good way to make sure that you always have tipsy buffs. And then, of course, I reduce the price of booze because... Um, Booze is great, and it's a great way to add damage to your character, regardless of what it is. So, reduce that cost. The only other thing here is that when I took out of um, secrets and revealing secrets, I just put it down in here. Dice rewards always grant three additional red dice. Being able to choose which rooms you want to go to so that you get rewards that you want. And weapons have 20, plus 25% chance to spawn pre-enchanted. It's nice. I don't think that they're necessarily good. I'm debating if they're better than getting more secrets and knowing that I'm going to get them. Otherwise, these right here, or this line over here, is probably where I would put, throw those points. Anyways, now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and get bopped on some more uh, Cinder 16, shall we? Before we do that, let's turn Cinder 16 on. God, that was 14 minutes of me trying to explain my masteries. Apologies for that. Okay. We got a alternate class, so we're theoretically going to be feeling pretty good. I have not played superhero, though. First trait selection, you will get to choose a superpower. Wow. We're probably going to get that. Even stats is okay. Alignment is good. Eh? Otherwise, HP, no extra shields, mana points is the same, stamina is the same. Okay. It's very odd that that's not green. Considering that they color code everything else. Just something I've noticed. Anyways. Go ahead and start the game. Take a quick look at uh, Superhero here. 
evil deeds increase your alignment instead of decreasing it. That is kind of insane. Grant 5 seconds of invincibility after taking damage. Huh. Interesting. Not very useful to us right now. And grant 30% increased body damage. We start with no weapons. Okay. Doesn't this also... Plus 3 strength scaling. And adds 45 to 105 unarmed damage. So we've actually got... 300, we can't be negative enchanted on our fists, hopefully. Uh, seems pretty good. And it seems, due to the fact that we are getting E-rated weapon scaling off of dexterity, that that means that this would be plus 3, so that would be an A rank for strength scaling. Interesting. Okay. Oh, we, we can't even read the superhero traits because it's just going to... Now, I'm pretty sure it's these orange ones here. So we just need to pick an orange one and deal with it. What did we get? Super strength. Gain 30 strength. Jesus H! Okay. Okay, game. That doesn't actually mean... Theoretically, a lot of damage increase for us, unfortunately. Just keeping an eye out for secrets. If I miss any, by the way, feel free to point them out in the comments below. Because one thing that I've noticed is that they don't look the same when you take off the uh, the obvious glowing secrets. I'm just waiting for this Terminator to show up and just ruin my day. Ten, that's really not enough for a shop. Although... We're in the forest, so it could be the wreath shop. If it's the wreath shop, then we can use that to grab uh, a death defy. We could use that to grab extra stamina, which would currently offset the fact that we've got like poor stamina. That would, however, have to replace our vigilante mask, which we really don't care about. Uh, we'll go to the key. Is there a way to make me punch further? Do I want the forest event? Not really. Like, I probably do. Like, the move and speed off of the owl would be nice. We can fit boots. Oktoberfest and Frozen, huh? That was suppressed. We really don't have any range. Oh my goodness, we almost ended ourselves there. Alright. It's honestly a shame that they got rid of Thief in the Shadows. Guess it was too easy to... Excuse me? 30% increased body damage. Do we care if we just add lightning to our melee attacks? Like... Is unarmed technically melee? I guess that's... That's really only one way to find out, right?
Um, I guess we're going to have to see if we shock something. And of course, that uh, that did drop our strength scaling. Oh no, we still have a B. So strength naturally doesn't scale body damage? That seems a little weird. Anyways. Give me a full recover, please. Thank you. That was absolutely bad damage. All right. Do I want bombs? I also wasn't checking to see if I was shocking that bird. This one's going to end a little early. Unless I can somehow bring this one back. We are shocking, by the way. Oh my good lord, are you serious? Like, that's my bad, but I can't believe that that projectile stays out there that long. So now I get to ask, do I actually care? Like, at this point, we really don't have anything going on as far as, like, our unarmed damage. We just have plus 30 strength, which is nice. Um, so do we just grab a weapon? I almost think that we do. Especially one with poison seems pretty good. Don't have any souls. Good lord. That one I legitimately didn't see. Bad deeds make us good. Some bonus critical hit chance. can't even afford that one. I would have to sell something like uh, these. Okay. Lightning gloves are no longer good on us. Might as well take some free armor. prefer not to have either of these. Oh 
Okay. Seems to be working just fine. Cool. Also, while I'm doing whatever the heck it is that I'm doing here, Paladin Helmet isn't bad. It isn't bad at all. Periodically trigger icicles to fall on enemies, dealing cold damage. Chills enemies. Somewhat nice. Um, take a Paladin Helmet and I'll put that on. We're getting a little bit tanky now. Anyways, as I'm doing what I'm doing uh, here, also sort of wanted to talk about uh, how, like, early in the series, I was definitely talking about how, typically speaking, on the channel, we cover content in ways that other content streamers don't. And you might be thinking, oh, what's that? Getting your ass beat on Cinder 16? <laughs> no. Um, we do more Type A content, if that makes sense. Um, lots of people out there answering the question, what does Tiny Rogues? Very few people out there answering the question, how does Tiny Rogues? So, I actually plan to make quite a bit of content about, like, when certain things are good to pick up, when certain things are bad to pick up, numerically speaking. Oh my god, my spider saved me there. Oh, anyways. Uh, specifically from, like, trait standpoint, um, you know, and stuff like that. So if you have any idea of stuff that you would like covered that isn't explained in the game or that you just have general questions about, be sure to leave that down below. Um, what I plan to cover is... Ooh, I'm trying to collect my thoughts and not die at the same time here. What I plan to cover, uh, at least initially, is... The one trait that is you deal 100% crushing blow chance, but you cannot crit. And the question isn't, is it good? Because it is. It's disgusting. The question is, how much do you have to actually go out of your way to make that bad? And so I hope to cover that tomorrow. It takes a lot of math. I gotta put it together, figure out exactly how I want to explain it. But, uh... That's basically what some of the future plans are, is looking into stuff like that. Because a content creator said a while back, and I'm not going to tell you who, because they're kind of cancelled right now, unfortunately, that if you cannot find content out there, you need to be the one making the content. And so that's kind of what my whole YouTube channel has been about, right? Is that there's not really a lot of Type A content for a lot of games. And so I aim to be that person because even though people might not necessarily be type A gamers like me and want to know like all the things, how does this work? What's the most efficient way to uh, scale my critical chance? There are still going to be people out there asking, well, how do critical chance work though? So being able to answer that question for those people is something that they often do not get the answer to. And so that's the sort of niche that I like to think that I fill. Um, getting your ass beat at Cinder 16 is also a very good niche that I'm pretty good at too. Although, I'm gonna say it right now, I think this might be a run. <laughs> Not the run, a run. Increased stamina recovery speed, I'll take it. We're out of our warm-up phase, so that's something we got going on for us. I like charms. We don't need to recover, so we can go ahead and grab this. Increased magic damage is definitely something. Plus three strength. Honestly, we've got enough freaking strength. Um, yeah, let's just grab a multiplier that we can work with. Or it's not a multiplier. It goes into increased. That's a whole bunch of other shit, too. We don't need to fully recover. Attuned. More strength, I guess. But yeah, I feel like... 
due to both A, being a spreadsheet warrior, and B, like, having an inordinate amount of time in games like, say, Path of Exile and such, which are very mechanically dense, makes it so that I'm at least able to hopefully explain stuff at a basic level, but I don't know, we'll find out. Again, if you want me to elaborate on something that I mentioned... Holy shnikes, look at that. Too bad that's bad for us. I guess we're taking Grenadier? Grenadier isn't bad. It's free damage and a difficulty where we're mostly trying to keep ourselves alive. Anyways, yeah, as always, if you have any questions, you want me to elaborate further on something I kind of like glance by, or you know, stuff like that, feel free to mention that. I'm more than willing to admit when I have no freaking clue what I'm talking about. And I'm always willing to help out, I like to think. I was hoping for Paladin Shield. That was not Paladin Shield. Um, I would rather take one mana over some stamina recovery, personally. Let's go to the shop. We got lots of... What is this? This is interesting. I'm not sure we go crystals. Like, Superhero Suit is... I actually want to keep this, I think, because it allows us to push bosses that we normally shouldn't, because plus five seconds of invincibility after taking damage when we've got armor is some incredible push potential where we can just, like, HP check bosses. Thankfully, we haven't had to try to do that. Um, this is a purple weapon with a very good enchantment. I'm pretty sure we're taking the sucker to endgame. Yeah, we'll plus three this thing. Now, if we go to the tavern, we don't really have money. I don't want to get cursed either. So let's go ahead and re-roll this. Five souls. Is that going to do anything? I guess now that Thief in the Shadows has been absolutely neutered, It allows us to pick something up at shops. Yeah. Plus one dexterity. Definitely like that. Okay. Plus one heart when bombed. Don't mind if I do. I still want that Paladin Shield, because if I can get that, that's kind of huge. Um, is that worth going to a set item when we can just get a random charm, though? Probably not. Bone Enchanted is fine. Storm Enchanted should be fine. This should be easy. Ish. Famous last words. Wait for my mana to uh, regen. I don't know if... I'm pretty sure this isn't covered in game. And I don't know if I mentioned it before. But especially when you're playing a mana build. Time is moving during this time. As far as like effects on the screen. Like obviously the bones themselves aren't moving. But I wish that I could demonstrate. If I had a mana star on the field. It would also slowly be vacuumed towards me. I'm regenerating stamina at this time. I'm regenerating mana at this time. It is a very good idea to sometimes not spam space or E or whatever your move forward button is. Well, that's a thief in the shadows. Give me something good, then. Meep, bap. 
Thunderbolt ring is pretty freaking good. Unfortunately, we do not shock things. Faster tick rate of periodical. We have grenade. We'll take it. Otherwise, that uh, helmet at the end is equivalent to our, our... What am I trying to say? Our paladin helmet. Except worse. Ooh, I'll take some cake. He got that cake, though? Rare weapons? I... I think we spider boys now. Don't ask me how that's spelled. Trait tomes, I'm quite happy with what we have. Let's just get closer to another level. I hate bards so frickin' much. I hate how they can spawn projectiles off the edges. If you haven't noticed, that's like my safe zone that I like to traject around. So bards just clip me for free damage. Which is a me problem. I'm really sad that I cannot get Borger, so I guess we're going to have to go for bombs instead. We have no money, and we must scream. Oh, I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Tell you what though, those spiders are pumping some damage. I'm very ha I've never actually taken this. I wonder if they also count as companion damage. That would explain. Come on, man. <laughs> Why? We have no more dice. Hazmat suit. Grants increased damage over time tick speed, but reduces damage over time dealt. We don't deal... Like, unless I'm poisoning things with the spiders and I don't know about it, it's definitely a cell right there. I'd like to go for a rare item. Again, we're likely not going to get rid of our uh, armor. Oh. Okay, I absolutely hate this boss. It's not a hard boss, and in fact, I'm going to show you guys that uh, a spot that if you're not playing Cinder 16 or otherwise enchanting your bosses, it's like free wins on this guy. I don't like him because he has like the correct speed plus trailing effects that just absolutely activates my vestibular hypofunction. And it's going to be absolutely suffer. You can tell that I really don't want to press this button right now. Cupid is going to keep us from cheesing them, though. As well as the, the little guys are. But I'm going to show you the spot. It's like somewhere around here. Wait till he actually starts coming at us. You want to be slightly below him. And guess what? His uh, projectiles here cannot hit us. It sort of works during the second phase, too. Because he does the side bullets, you just have to make sure that you're not getting hit from, like, the horizontal sides, like this here. You might have to, like, smidge, like, a little down or a little up. But you should be safe from the vertical here. Again, with these mods, we're not going to be able to do that. He also doesn't go back and forth the whole time. He'll go once forward, once back, and then he'll disappear and do, like, a whole bunch of line shots towards you. You'll see it. I'm sure you guys are aware of the boss, too. Like, I don't have to necessarily mansplain this. And here we're trying to use as little movement as possible. And then he's going to go back to doing this. Now the bullets certainly make this a little bit more precarious.
Okay, we took one hit. That's not too bad. I guess Cupid wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Web was certainly easy for that. I was very grateful to have that. It could have been much worse. I guess your companions gain critical hit equal to your critical hit? Um. Okay, game. Alright, I understand. Would we... Would we, would we want alpha mentality right now? See, these are the things I ask myself, and that's why I try and spreadsheet the game a lot. Now, fact of the matter is, is that if you're actually good at this game, unlike I am, you get to say who cares, because you can beat the game with literally anything if you're skilled enough. But uh, for the rest of us humans, we probably need to actually, like, make good decisions. <laughs> Slashing. What is this? Our book does thrusting damage. Hmm. Maybe it's Apocalypse here. Or maybe we're going to end up re-rolling this. But I think Apocalypse gives us the most, like, bang for our buck right now. So we're going to go ahead and take that. Again, rare weapons. We've got our weapon. We don't care. Ah, that was bad damage on my part. I didn't... Like, I couldn't physically see where that bullet was, so I should have just went down instead of trying to dodge through it. Um... A little bit brought worst, why not? Uh, this is... I'm suffering. <laughs> I hate sharks so much. Um... We're fine, though. At least that's what I tell myself. Hazmat suit, don't want it. Lotus amulet, don't want it. Give me more cake. Yeah, I guess we got a... Like, I'm not used to this weapon and having to deal with those sharks. I think I got it on the mental stack now. Again, I'm looking for these secret areas and I'm not seeing them. This is actually quite good for our Paladin Helmet, because when we repair our armor here, we're actually going to heal as well. Kind of nice. And we have money for booze. <laughs> oh, no, we're not melee. That's unfortunate. Okay. So what do you got? Whiskey? Attack speed. I kind of like attack speed, but I'm not sure... If we have the intelligence to support that. Both in-game and real life. Um, we don't have a lot of decks, right? Like, it's... We have a moderate amount of decks, I believe. Like, is it just better than 30% damage? I don't know if this hits our companions, though. See, I wish beer would show shit. <laughs> uh, we'll get bougie. We'll buy the whiskey. I wish we had one more gold so that we could just go ahead and buy an extra one. Or we'll get lucky. We'll level up and then we'll grab boozer. Everybody stand back. I got a heaping glass of, of spiders. All right. Yeah, we can take a charm. I'm feeling pretty good about most of our equipment. Obviously, like, I don't even know if I technically want to take the paladin shield anymore. Like, it's kind of nice, but uh, spirit talisman's currently looking pretty good. Laser and arcane. Oh, come on, man. Arcane's fine. It's just a little weird with this boss. Laser, on the other hand, can suddenly be a problem, depending on what our bots are. 
so let's kill the bots. Oh, come on, man. Oh, pfft. And we're gonna give that star enough time to get over to us. Oh, right into the laser. I don't think, like, I probably could have reacted better to the arcane blob, like, appearing right where I was walking, but that second hit was definitely some bad damage. Uh, plus five to the resale value of all items. That's kind of losing its value. Our last pawn shop is on floor nine. We could still find some stuff. Um, otherwise, the rest of this, like, door shield would absolutely be hilarious. Just have a ton of armor. Maybe we just carry door shield. Because we can attune before the final boss and just get all this armor. We'll hold the door. Increased movement speed, pretty good. Three dexterity, pretty good. Each point of strength additionally increases top end damage. Holy shit! That's worth more than 20% more damage. Holy god! All of our attacks are now lethal hits. Is that right? Yeah, lethal hits is top end damage. Um, I would absolutely love some dexterity, too. Please attune my stuff. Thank you. What's the event for the volcano? God, I don't know. Let's check it out. Oh, it's just another fishing. Well, I think fishing can appear anywhere. one stack of curse. Am I cursed? Yeah, oh boy! Otherwise, what do you do? Ocean's Bounty, 20 rooms, increased attack damage, attack speed, movement speed. I want that to hit the final boss, so we kind of got to do that, like, towards the end of floor 8. And I've never been able to actually catch three fish out of this. If you have, let me know. It always breaks for me, so usually I skip it. I was hoping that it was going to make me a liar on camera, though, in all honesty. Oh. I shouldn't have taken that damage. That was me. Does this count as armor? No. Or repairing armor, I should say. Plank shield. <laughs> uh, dispels one stack of curse. I'll be honest, let's do it. Like, just get that off my character. And then this beef will level us. I'm hoping for Boozer. I can't see anything. Because it's dead. Okay. Okay. Come on, Boozer. I 
think we can afford glass cannon. Oh, yeah, we can. Because we got that 30 strength, buddy. Otherwise, unstable explosives, of course, works with our grenade. It's pretty freaking good, to be honest. Especially that more top-end damage. Um, but no, we're just going to take crushing hit. It's, like, so good. Otherwise, Goat Force is also, like, ridiculously good. That's what we need. We need Ruthless Hits, because that's 100% more top-end damage. That'd be a lot of frickin' damage. Um, no point in us going to the tavern, in all honesty, so let's just keep it going. Yeah, since we're now guaranteed our top end damage and that's increasing with our strength. Oh boy. Like, that was bigger than Boucher for us. Eh? I guess we can get rid of these Thunder Grip Gauntlets. Like, why are we carrying them? Okay, this is the one boss you don't want to see at Cinder 16 because of the form where it's enclosing you towards the center. Tornado and Danger Zone are two things that we really can't do anything about. We're probably going to take some damage here. We might die here. Danger zone. Oh! I don't think that that dodge was necessary, but we almost got clipped twice by danger zone there. Kinda nasty. Satin gloves, your mana star buff effect additionally grants chance for magic attacks to repeat. That's a lot of spiders. Increased effective mana star buff effects. <sighs> Honestly, that's... It's not terrible. It's more attack speed. And allows us... Like, the mana, the mana drain refund is also, like, kind of huge. I think we can take the mana gloves. I'm going to choose to uh, bet on good here. When I finally see it, I don't have a bomb. What a cruel and angry god. On critical hit, inflict fatigue, which makes enemies take more damage from critical hits. Honestly, not bad. Um, unstable explosives, again, pretty good, especially now that we have crushing hits. If we have crushing damage, then we literally don't care about instability. It's 30% more damage. So I think that that's, like, really freaking good for us. 
Okay, we get to repair our armor. I'm feeling slightly better now. We get some cake. Uh, did that try to give us a flash charge? And I ran away from it like an idiot? That's nice if it did. I'll take some free booze. Hey, it's whiskey. It's exactly what we wanted. We can get better boots. Missile and bone. This should be fine. I kind of hate missile. Plus the the instability is really freaking wrecking. Thank God for spiders, man. Really the MVPs of the world. Are you a pro spider person? Throw that down in the comments. Gives me an evade. <sighs> I definitely don't need those boots. <laughs> or we could get a periodically uh, fire mortars. I think that having the one armor is currently more important to us than like literally everything here. So we're just grabbing something to sell. And we'll probably actually even just toss it on the floor. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, these aren't really doing it for me. So before the boss, we want to take our ocean's bounty because then it'll be there when we fight death. any of this. Might as well take the warrior stash. You don't have to open it. We don't have to bomb it either. Let's take some more crit chance. Helps out our minions. I thought that I timed that well. Game says no, though. Um, we can blow open that chest to get some flash charges. We don't have <laughs> except that we don't have it. Okay. Let's sell some stuff. Get rid of that. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. We're keeping the door. We're keeping the fish. Okay. Level us up. don't know what happens between pack mentality and crushing hit chance. I'm not really willing to find out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, trigger mania isn't too bad. 100% increased trigger damage means that it also hits our grenades. It hits our apocalypse. I think that's the only triggers that we currently have. I might be incorrect. Rage is some free attack speed. It's kind of nice. Takes the... Um, what would I say? Uh, it takes the, the emphasis off of needing whiskey for attack speed. Because even if we were to get Boozer, 
rage is worth more. And we're almost always hitting something within four seconds, so it would be permanent rage. However, comma, is this our last one? It is. I'm willing to reroll here. Taunts enemies makes them take more damage at close range. Yeah. Time to use this boy. What, what was that? Song of the Wind? Undash Tailwind. Increase attack speed. And movement speed. Seems good. Alright, what are we doing here? Lock, I guess. Too bad our weapon's fully upgraded. Huh. Really wish I could go to that shop, but consumables isn't bad either. If we get some zinc in here to increase our intelligence growth? Although Ambrosia isn't going to give us intelligence. I think that we would prefer to stay illegal, thank you. Like, that was honestly kind of a waste. We don't have bombs to open the blood chest for flash charges. These spiders are bumping. How much int do we have right now? 11? Not bad. Critical hit chance 31%. Oof! Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, before the boss, take this. We now get that during the boss and during death. A uh, small room with possessed weapon shield. I think we can deal with this. I, what I don't like is this guy just the orbs around the screen, but with spiders, we probably don't care, honestly. My stamina, please. Oh, don't make me a liar. I'm pretty sure stamina regents during this. Uh, I guess I'm a liar. Sorry, guys. No hate? You know it. That's kind of huge. Better than an armor, though? <laughs> like, 5% critical hit chance? What is this? Yeah, liking the build. Hopefully you guys are liking the build, too. Um, I'll be honest, I really only care about beating death right now. We're probably not going to meet any bad boy points anyways. So, give me another heart. Honestly, is it a heart? Or is it 20% more damage? It's probably a heart. We don't have a revive. We shouldn't need it. But, famous last words, right? Ow. Especially when I'm taking bad damage like that. <sighs> Good lord, man. Yeah, grabbing the heart was a great idea. Consumables. If we get another Twilight Sprig and a Whetstone, I'm gonna 
frickin' cry. Um... I don't remember this event either. Yeah, why not? Periodically inflicts corruption. Increases dark ailment. Ah, oh, hold up now. It's a permanent increased damage taken. That is definitely better than this. We don't need that. Put that on our persons. Give me more damage. We could use the booze. Meat map. I walked right into that one. That was me. Could you... Just eat spiders already. We're doing some insanely disgusting damage by the pie. If you haven't noticed, like, it's a lot of damage. Um... Floor's almost done, but let's... Ugh! I would love to repair my armor and also heal. Thank you! Fish and ships is actually worth it. Like, this is nice, but it didn't really pan out as well as I thought it would, so let's just put on the door. Tune items. And, uh, I don't know, let's friggin' do this, huh? Guess we'll take the set item. We got a little baby death, too. Thorn and lava. Should be fine. That's a no hit. Look at that. Um, I'll be honest, this is already an hour long run. Unfortunately, I'm sure you guys would love to see me push this some more, but I think I'm honestly going to just call it here. Hold up. That's insanely good. Sorry. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the video here because it's already an hour long. Hopefully, we'll be able to show off a full run next time due to the fact that, uh, one, like, I 100% think that this can go to the distance. But, two, we won't be talking about our masteries for 15 minutes at the start of the video. So, there's definitely the room for it to be in there. Uh, other than that, hopefully the run was entertaining or at least somewhat educational. If you have any feedback whatsoever, be it questions, comments, concerns, or player alerts, be sure to put those down in the comments below. And until next time, I'll catch you guys around.